Today, we're gonna to talk the do's and don'ts of soil testing. When should you soil test? How many cores do you need? How does the nutrient you're testing for impact the sampling protocol? To get some answers, I caught up with OMAFA corn specialist Ben Rosser at Southwest Diagnostic Days at Ridgetown College. Now, Ben, you ran an interesting exercise today with the attendees on what to and what not to do when it comes to soil sampling. Um, let's start with you here. I, I think you're, you're in a bit of a hurry. Yeah, yeah, so we kind of had five characters today, Burn. First one is I'm gonna call the fast and cheap. Shovel bought for $15 on sale instead of a $400 probe. Uh, just literally shoveling soil into a bucket for a soil sample. Yeah, now and I watched Aiden here. Uh, he was a bit of, on a bit of an angle. Yeah, so a uh, nice approach, but maybe a little bit in on an angle instead of coming in straight up and down like we'd like to see. Yeah. So Ben, what do we take away from this? I mean, some bad stuff, some good stuff. Run us through, uh, you know, what you consider the proper protocol. Yeah, so we had a lot of bad characters. I think if we were gonna do this right, again, for a basic or P and K soil sample, we're going six inches deep. Some groups mentioned, put something on the probe so you don't have to look for those marks. You know you're doing it reliably. Uh, use a container you know has not had fertilizer or any other kind of contaminant in it and definitely one that's not galvanized and you know take your time do them right make sure you're getting to a consistent depth use a clean pail 